Yeah, Same I can't do it. with professors who are just so monotone. You can tell they're they don't. They're, there's no real passion in it. They're drone. They that's, just basically. That's yeah. another part. That's another part about school is like I feel like the professors are part of the problem as well. Mm -hmm. If they don't have passion, I know a lot of teachers back in high school that had a real passion for what they did, and I felt that passion, and, yeah. and I enjoyed their classes and going to their classes, and I didn't like leaving their classes because they had a passion, and I got really good grades in all those classes. Stuff that I yeah. didn't normally, I would never care for, I would never on my own go and research, but because the class was fun, I got straight A's in that class, easy. Because you were entertained, you wanted to come to school. And I learn. stayed awake well, every minute, but then there's classes that I was good at, that I just couldn't stay awake in. I couldn't get good grades in, but I knew the stuff like the back of my hand. I could teach the class my damn self, but because the teacher was so boring, I just yeah. failed the class. And I, I, mean, I agree. I agree. I will use the course evaluation sheet, though. I will be honest. I will be like, yo, this professor was trapped. <laughs> Bro, I, I will meet up with groups of students to be like, yo, are we writing the same thing on this? Because we paid for it. We're not failing this class because the teacher was trash. I'm not right. doing it. And I've, I've, I've done plenty of these because you got to hold people accountable. You know, same thing with politics, same thing. You got to really, uh, people say snitches get stitches. Well, <laughs> piss me up. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Worst thing, the worst thing about education is when your educator is, is not into it and yeah. doesn't know how to do their job. Because mm -hmm. you're showing up to class. I had this one. I had this one physics teacher. She was the head of the uh, the physics department, but they were low staffed, and so she had to she had to then teach a whole course. It was her first time teaching a course. Very 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 intelligent woman. Let me tell you something. Very intelligent. The fact that she did not know how to work a PowerPoint or any of the electronic uh, tools that she was required to use to teach this class. It was a. <laughs> it was a an absolute circus it was an absolute circus she gave us all a's i failed every single test but every single <laughs> test she passed the class with all a's and that's the problem i didn't learn any well i did learn a lot i did learn a lot but obviously i didn't learn enough okay yeah. this is a university this is a university and hey, it's like what the hell is a business no now, child dude. left behind right just give it's you everybody bit. participation ribbons. It was, it was embarrassing for the university. I'm like, geez, Louise. I was embarrassed for the professor because she's a very nice woman. She just didn't know how to use anything. Like, I would have to help her open files and stuff on her computer. <laughs> I'm just like, girl. Now, make like, that girl, right, not paying make, me enough. Make that grade an A right there. Just go ahead and put the A there. Yep. Yeah. Good look for my friends. Great. <laughs> school is, or college is the place for you to find yourself, like you are saying. Yes. And the thing is, some people find themselves and like, okay, I really want to be this doctor, so I'm gonna keep going through it. Some people right. find themselves in the first, like, in their freshman year, like, screw all this. I want to go make um, computers and computer gadgets. Right. I don't need this. So you know, definitely use college to find yourself. Be careful about how you set up your finances because you could quit and end up having to pay for all four years anyway. So. Yes, yeah, definitely. I won't, harp on this. I won't harp on this, but I think also for those of you that do work, because like I found part of me like when I was working, because I started working at 15, like legally and whatnot. And it's just like, OK, all the jobs I did, it's just like, I don't want to do this ever again. I'm not yeah. going to take this type of behavior. So I think part of that, too, I found myself from like the workforce. Yeah. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. I. I found out a lot about, I found a lot of information out in the workforce too, because I didn't want to, like you said, I didn't want to do that again. I didn't want right. to have to deal with that behavior again. Not only that, but I felt like the people above me weren't better than me. So I'm like right. the person who's like the rank right above me, let's say I was a, a just a regular worker and then somebody was a shift manager or somebody's like, a cashier or somebody's a, a rank above me i'm like this person is no better than me i'm running right. circles around them at this low at this low stage of my career because yes. i i know i used to work at a gas station i used to be what's called the gas jockey i think they just made that up because they just needed a name for the position but i was i was um cleaning the bathrooms i was restocking the shelves i was facing objects on the shelves if you ever worked in the store you know what that means yes. and then i was 
Yeah, I was um, restocking the refrigerator. So the vendor would drop the stuff off and I would restock it for them. And then I would restock the kiosk, which is the cashier's job when they're not when they don't have a, like a lot of customers. They would turn around and put the cigarettes back and and um, stock that up. Then I was fixing the gas pumps. I was cleaning up gas spills. I was taking out the trash inside and outside. I was refilling the coffee, which was the delicatessen's. Pe- that it was their job. I was um, making like. Um, donuts or whatever it was that was back there. Donuts. I was making that when they weren't busy. I like I was doing everything. I was basically like the store manager, but I was the lowest ranking person in there. And then they saw how how driven I was, so they kept making me do more and more and not pay me anymore. They wouldn't promote me. They wouldn't pay me anymore. They're like, well, he's just gonna do it anyway. So let's get some free money out of him. Exploiting. So, yeah. And I'm like, I have all this yeah. knowledge of the way things work around here. I I can keep this place afloat just by being here. And if I'm not here, things are noticeably different. So why am I working for this company when right. I can run this company? So I stopped working there and like I just from that moment I realized I want to work for myself and I have the ability to do so. I have the I just I don't always have all the knowledge that I need, but that comes with time, you know, in this day and age you can watch YouTube videos, you can you know, yes. it's so much it's so easy to get that information and I already had the drive. I already had the physical aptitude so i was like why am i doing this for somebody else why am i making somebody else's dreams come true the ceo has no idea what i'm doing down here but i'm ma- i'm making sure that stuff runs smoothly and i do i do i do find some value in doing what you have to do to do what you want to do mm-hmm. right. um but if if you cannot if you cannot muster up the willpower to work for somebody else then you should use that power and, and you should definitely go hands all in for it um and just and just completely work for yourself yeah. um the people that do have that nine to five job like i had the nine to five job before i before i got let go from uh home depot i dude i hate i didn't hate that job but i was so focused while pushing carts like all i could think about was streaming and i'm like i know exactly where this paycheck is going it's going exactly back into <laughs> my streaming and you know what i mean i was so focused and that would that's what really made me um work hard during my job um so i don't know i don't know but but with that same with that same conversation not working for them and working for twitch and working for myself you can see the numbers rise like mm-hmm. there's no doubt about it like right. the time the time that you invest in yourself is so valuable than, than working for someone else you know mm-hmm. what i mean so much more valuable exactly i was talking um today with some some friends and I was saying to myself that if I had five thousand dollars a month from a nine to five job versus two thousand dollars a month from my own self employment, which one would I take? I would take the two thousand from my own self employment any day of the week because that two thousand dollars is way more valuable than that five because that's all my money and everything that and all that every dollar that I get from that 2000, I can put right back into myself and then make even right. more money. But if you're working that nine to five, you not, you can't put money back into that job and get money back again. Like, it right. doesn't work that way. You can maybe buy stocks. That's about as close as you can get to put money back into that company to get more money back out. And, and that really depends on the stocks. Like you have no control of the stocks, but if you invest that 2000 in yourself, you have a lot of control of how successful or if it will be successful mm-hmm based on your drive now it's not guaranteed to be successful but you have a lot more control than a stock yeah and i oh. and to have this conversation with someone from the older generation is very hard like for oh, your yeah. parents you know for example my parents for example you can't have this legit logical conversation with them saying how if i invest this time into myself right now it's going to be more valuable for my future which you want and i want but they see going to college, working a nine to five is the safe route. It's the it's the traditional route. So they won't or can't be open to the idea of this conversation. I mean, yeah. brainwashed. I see. As far as um, the Gen- older G- generation, for me, mm-hmm. uh, I'm stubborn. I'm stubborn as hell. So my mom, she knows that. So when I tell her what I want to do, there's no talking me out of it. There's no. This is how it should be now because i i'm not it's not happening i'm doing what i want to do and i have millions of examples on why i should do it 
this way and i am completely ready to handle whatever downfalls that come with it but uh if you look at any if you look at your ceo of whatever job that for example if i talk to my mom if you look if i tell her to look at the ceo of the job that you're working for you think that person just worked a nine to five to become the ceo it doesn't work that way like you have to take risks you have to move outside of the box you have to you have to build the box so other people can work inside that box and build your dreams instead of sitting inside that box and building somebody else's dreams it's not it's not a life for me i can't do it it's like training time for labor or late yeah time for labor versus like passion yeah I'd rather be a bum asking for change and using that change to build another life for myself than to sit here and then be comfortable with a nine to five. I hear you though. And I mean, and then, I mean, not only, only is it financially rewarding, but it's spiritually rewarding too. You can lay in your bed and be like, yo, freaking did all that. I did all of it. Mm -hmm. You can, you can feel good about yourself, you know, people people and then people are going to tell you how good of a job you've been doing they're going to see it yeah people are just definitely going to notice cuz uh, i'll uh, tell you oh, what's this? what was that anyway um <laughs> one of my goals one of my short term goals in life is well i was i was already telling aj about this like there's this this company out here called um Ranoki and it's it's a whole story in that but it's like a small clothing brand and i said my first goal is to take over that brand not not to buy it or anything but to be bigger than that brand because it's probably one of the smallest biggest brands if that makes any sense out here so i want to take over that mm -hmm. i want to be better better than that and there's another company of course everyone knows tommy hilfiger that's out here too but it's not that it's one of the bigger brands but it's probably yeah. the smallest of the big brands out here and i want to be bigger than that next and I have like these like small uh, milestones that tell me if I'm getting closer to that. For example, if I go to a place and I see paparazzi somewhere, like somebody wearing a paparazzi shirt or a hat or something like that, I know that I'm getting closer to that. If it's a stranger I've never met before that's wearing my stuff, I know I'm getting closer to that. And then my next step is to see two people in the same place wearing paparazzi and that are not affiliated with each other. So imagine that you have two people in a store that are wearing paparazzi brand stuff or your brand stuff and they are not together they didn't come in there together they don't even know who they who each other are and then because if there's two people two random people there imagine how many other people are around somewhere else that have your stuff so it's it it's a great feeling to see your brand out there and you didn't personally give that to them it's amazing so that's awesome yeah, that's that's one of my goals right there. I like I like that too, especially what Ash is saying. Like earlier, I had dropped off some merchandise for people, and this they have this is the second time they've purchased from me, and it's just like, damn, I'm actually you know giving people my merchandise. They want that. They see value in me. Yeah, and it's just like it is very like it's validating. It makes you do feel good, and it's just like I can keep going. Also, like self improving yourself too, you know if it comes down to losing weight or just like bulking muscle and stuff like that, people notice. And it's just like, you know, it, um, what is that? It reemphasize the fact that you can do anything if you put your mind to it, honestly. Yeah. 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 When people, there's a few type of people that buy your, your merchandise. There's the, uh, your friends, you got your family, and then you got just random people that legit like your stuff. And that's the best right there. When somebody buys your merchandise because they just legitimately like your merchandise. It has nothing to yeah. do with you. They don't give they don't care about you. They might not even know who you are, but they just have to have your merchandise. That that feels so much better than, you know, uh, it I always appreciate like when people buy it because they just want to support you, but at the end of the yeah. day, that's not going to, you know, pay the bills because eventually they're going to buy one or two things but it's really it really um hinges on the people who actually need to have that feel like they need to get that because they really they really like the product and that's what that's really important to me right there so that's why i always try to create value in every product that i put out and i don't want it i don't want people to just buy it just because it's me if that's if that's the reason why somebody's buying it you know just don't buy it you know i i appreciate the support but don't buy it just because it's mine 
You know what I mean? Ooh, and that's good too to have those supporters that love your stuff so much that they actually want to push your brand. And I met some people out there, out here like that that wouldn't just push my brand with no uh, reciprocation. They don't need no money. They don't need no acknowledgement, no nothing. They just want to push my brand because they like it so much that like they want to show other people. Yeah, like AJ. <laughs> like, Davey, he going to pocket the money though. Oh, Lordy is Davey. Davey's mischievous. <laughs> and, take it all. and if you believe in yourself, people have no other choice but to believe in you or step aside. And I yeah. and I realized that because um, I'm, I I'm a jokester, so I, I like to joke around. So a lot of times people don't take me serious. Um, a couple of people who heard about my brand, like that's not your brand, that's somebody else's brand. You just it just has a name similar to yours, so you just call it yours. I was like, no, this is my brand, and I kept, you know, reiterating it and showing other people, and then people start coming to me and talking to me about it, and then that person was like, okay, it might be your brand. I'm starting to believe you, and then there's some people that are like, oh, you're not, you're no different than anybody else. It's not going to go anywhere. This and that. And then those same people now are saying, oh, so what, how is your brand doing? How is, how is um, this doing? Or um, what's your plan for, you know, for the future? How is, how's that going? So now they're all interested. They're all listening and they're all um, believing in me because I never stopped believing in myself, no matter how many people, how many times people would like naysay on me. You know, that, that, that comes with it though, right? Because yeah. my dad used to say, if you're not doing, if, if you don't have one hater, not mm -hmm. doing it right. Exactly. I mean, it kind of, comes, oh. kind of comes with the territory. Thank you. For you should expect it and want it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I definitely do. Because I, I have a lot of support out here in Japan because people in Japan are just like really supportive. But, you know, it does kind of feel good to see that somebody's not liking it because it means that I am making so many waves that somebody's um, getting, somebody's drowning and they don't like it. So yep. I'm just gonna keep making right. these waves. And keep I have going. some people out here, people I know too, and it's just like I tell them about these ideas. It goes in one ear and out the other. Or like earlier when I was showing other people my merch, I could see it on their face, kind of like the this, um, this comfort. But I'm just like, ha, yeah. you know, I'm gonna have, right, right, I'm right. gonna have my moment. I'm gonna take over. So you're just gonna either ride the wave, or you can you know sit in the stands because like I'm gonna make it regardless. Yeah. So my thing is, I say things once and do things twice. So I show and prove. I don't, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to keep repeating myself. I'm just going to show you. And then I'll repeat myself after the fact. I'm like, this is what I told you I was going to do. And you see it working. You see it flourishing. Like, I'm not going to keep saying, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this in about a week or about a month. Nope. I'm going to tell you one time. Then I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you multiple times. Exactly. Sometimes you just got to, you know, just, you know, it's true when actions speak louder than words. It really mm -hmm. does. I mean, just do it like Nike, baby. But, um, but I think it's human nature. I think it's human nature for people to out of, out of, like from off the bat is doubt, you know, mm -hmm. and that's why we, where you find most success is you don't find it in your hometown. You got to venture out and you got to you know, touch other communities first to, and then bring it back. And to show your community, like, yo, see what I did? See, you see what we could have done together if you would have freaked with me in the first place? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that's what you got. Yeah. What you got to do? You got to you gotta venture out, then come back and show them, hey, yo, look. I'm here. Now freak with me. Now freak with me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, those I wouldn't even want to, like, associate with. Because it's just like, if you didn't believe in me back then, but, like, now you see all the success, it's just. That's how I am personally. Pay me. Pay me. You don't yeah. gotta talk. Just pay for my content though. You know, exactly. I'm not gonna turn down your dollar because you didn't put me back then. Yeah. You know, you can still contribute. Um, you're not gonna be in my inner circle though. I understand my time is not gonna, way not gonna, limited. I'm not gonna be strategizing with you. I'm not gonna be telling you what's gonna be happening in the future. Yeah. But you can stay tuned. Exactly. You, know? <laughs> you, missed, out. So, you missed out on that opportunity. Yeah, it starts off with like, hey, this is my idea. Would you like to come in and help me out with it? Or maybe give me some pointers on what my idea should be. And they're like, ah, oh, you ain't going to make nothing. You ain't going to do nothing. And then you come back later and, and they're like, hey, I have an idea you should do. Like, I don't have time to listen to you. I ain't got time for you right now. I'm busy succeeding. Like, go away. But if you want to if you want to purchase some merch, you know, here's a, here's a website. Yeah. You know, step, step back. Get in your lane now. You still, you still kind of don't want that energy around you, too, because from the from the jump, they showed you your their true colors. You know what I mean? Yeah, they only want so you if they know that you're I flying. 
those people too. I wouldn't exactly. even let them buy my product though. I mean, I'm just really like. I'm, I'm really. Like, I, I'm okay. They can, they can. They can buy it because you know if they're buying it, you know you're getting the money and uh, you know it's, their it's a win. Doesn't mean, their money doesn't mean ish to me though. It's just like. But the, I hope they go die, but no, like, go away. But uh, that's still it's advertising kind of hard for you. Take a and, and paparazzi, I think you're hitting the nail right on the head. It's business. It's nothing personal. Yeah. But with business, it kind of is personal because this is your passion. Yes. It's kind of hard to separate right. passion from the, the business aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, that is a skill that, you know, even some of the top CEOs have, have struggles with. Because you see people freaking fighting in boardrooms. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You know, you know, you know for even, even the jobs that I've worked for, for these big companies, I for that time that I'm working for them, I'm loyal to this company and I'll do anything to prove my loyalty. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's like I said, like I said, when, when business is, and passion are supposed to be separated, it's kind of, we're humans too. We're able to make mistakes. We're able to fall in the air. And, um, and what, so what I'm saying is it's not, it's not imperfect to, to be personal. It's not mm -hmm. imperfect. It's not the bad thing. Not a bad thing. But if you can uh, separate it, then it's good. Yeah. But awesome. As far as, yeah, like, yeah. actually, I would rather my haters buy my merchandise because it's like, you didn't believe me at first, but now you're putting money in my pockets. So I want you to I want you to buy my merch now. And then I want you to wear that merch. I want you to, I want you to um, advertise it and get me more money indirectly. So to me, I think it's a win uh -huh. when my haters purchase my merch. Okay. Cause it's like at first, cause if you think about it like this, like let's think about like racism, right? Let's, if you can take a clans member and change his mind and now he's buying your merch, like why wouldn't, why wouldn't you want that? Cause you just changed the person's that mind that, that, that felt so much hate towards you or so much animosity or, or he wanted you to feel so bad. Now he turns around and supports you. Like that's crazy. As Davey says, if your hater buys your merch, he isn't yeah. a hater anymore. Yeah. He ain't a hater no more. What yeah. was gonna say? What was gonna say about um that? Oh, the, the, I I remember the point that I was gonna make with YouTubing, dude. You can have a thousand people be like, uh, your 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 content's trash <laughs> or your booty at this game, but they're literally watching your video as they're commenting on this video. Yeah. Like low so tier god. Low tier god is a big example. A lot of people hate on him, but like they like his reactions and he's entertaining and he's smart too. So it's yeah. just like he welcomes the haters. So right, right. At a certain point, the hate is good. There's yeah. no such thing as no such thing as bad, bad publicity. publicity yep. You're getting it. You're getting it. Unless unless you're doing something crazy. Don't do any crime activities on the internet. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> like, 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 like you're saying, um, people love to crime, hate you. Content, though. Yeah. Sometimes they love that gang gang life, but let's just say the gang life won't lead you uh, down the right path. Nah, <laughs> Six, nine. It ain't gang. It ain't, it ain't gangsta, that's stupid. Right. Also, my cousin said DJ isn't my cousin's here. He said haters means you're doing something right because either way they're still talking about you and bringing publicity to your brand. And yeah. Davey says criticism, but criticism does not mean someone hates you. It depends if it is constructed or not. So you definitely got to keep those people that are real mm. and will tell you when your ish stinks, and you know. You know, and sometimes you gotta, you, you got, you need that person to tell you when your ish is good too. It smells like roses, baby. Right. Like, what's that taste? No, I'm just kidding. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it, it's true. Criticism is definitely needed. Yeah. But also, 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 when you criticize someone, you gotta, as the criticizer, you gotta ask yourself, what can the person that I'm telling this information to take from it? Mm -hmm. Are they gonna? Are they going to be down on themselves and cry in a corner and wish they never created the content in the first place? Or are they going to, are you, are you going to encourage them to create better content? You no, know? and not just the content that you want to see the content that actually might be good for the whole community that you can actually make their content and their, their platform a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta, you gotta be decisive on that. I agree with that, but it also depends on like who 
is critiquing because some people they'll critique and they'll just do it to critique they don't provide anything constructive it's just like oh your ish stinks and they just begin right. so negative but those yeah. who are actually trying to like want you to well, some people um, will, criti- oh, will break do you it. down just so they can break you down and hopefully yes. you'll quit right you gotta well you definitely gotta be cognitive of the people you gotta, you gotta be proven you gotta be you gotta be goaded before I'm able to listen to your advice. I mean, if I were to listen to every single advice on the streets, then I'd be so in many different directions. Right. You know, like you'd be you'd be appealing to your audience instead of trying to appeal to yourself, which it, that's backwards because your audience should be appealing to you. Yeah. So that's the reason why they tuned in in the first place, you know. But I, I'm also not gonna be I'm also not gonna be closed minded to the to the information that could possibly make me do better. You no, know, you got to be open minded and you got to be willing to be smart enough to he- heed advice. Yeah. You, know? you can't be so you can't be so um what's that naive to 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 you know be open fisted to to every advice, you know? Cuz then that's how you get crushed and that's mm-hmm. how you become self-conscious and that's how you get pigeonholed into playing the freaking game of the freaking hour. I hate that so much when I see streamers playing whatever game is hot like yo what happened to what happened to fallout or not fallout what happened to fall cry oh, excuse me i'm saying all the wrong game what happened to fortnite <laughs> oh fortnite. Now we're playing yeah, what happened to fortnite now we're playing what, what's the game of the fall, what's guys? The game of the, fall guys fall guys exactly yeah what happened you know you're playing fall guys but what about the community that you left in the past yeah. you know right. you just totally abandoned them you know so it's just like you got to do what's best for you. You got to yeah. do what's best for you at the end of the day. And that's life. Dude, you can have a baby mama that could be telling you to buy her some some more freaking Gucci uh, <laughs> peppers because she needs it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she needs it. And it'll, it'll make her love you more. And it nah. actually might be good not for the even. relationship. Nah. Right now. Never, not even. Never like, that. Never for that. The future, <laughs> but for the future, it's totally not sustainable. Yeah. So yeah, you gotta you have to make sure that you are definitely living your dream and that's my other dream. Because I have people tell me like, well, my products are like, you should put your logo here and you should put it all over here and this way and that way. I'm like, for like a quick second, I'm like, okay, maybe that's a good idea. Maybe people, maybe um, that's maybe if I get that, that person will buy it. But then I'm thinking to myself like, why do I care if that one person will buy it or not? Like I'm, right. I'm not doing this for them. Or if they like tell me you should put like this color in this or add this color, I'm like my style is is pretty basic. It's like black and white. It's like it's usually um monochrome, and that's that's my style. If I start putting like pink and purples and all this other stuff into it, then that's not my style anymore. That's not what you're coming for. Like you were saying, like that's not that's not what people signed up for. And then I, now I'm just being a commercial. Now I'm not. I don't that's, have an identity anymore. That's, now that's, I'm just like a random brand. That's the that's the uh, concept of selling your soul. You're not actually selling your soul, but you're selling you're selling your you're selling into an ideal. Exactly, you're selling your moralities to appeal to a master audience. Yeah, which when staying true and staying actual, like real, would have would have done. Maybe it probably would have done your career better, but it probably would have gave you a little bit more your happiness maybe mm. i don't know i don't that's know you, you... that's how i feel about ninjala because like the game i used to support it the game is doing so crappy and like i have little to no faith but i never really needed it in the first place people come to watch me for me i know some people they'll like hold on to it and cling for dear life to like get the views and stuff but it's just like well that sucks to be you i could do whatever i want and will do whatever i want because i know at the end of the day those that rock with me will be there. Yeah. Right. And it ain't selling myself. I could play whatever I want. Hell, even making just like the tier list, like I had a lot of people just hanging and chilling. You know, it's a good feeling to be able to do that. Not yeah. really worry. Yeah. You yeah, ask said- yourself, who are you making your stuff your stuff for? And what what are you doing, what you're doing, and what is it for? And for me, I'm doing what I'm doing for the people who want to see me and want to support me and um, have the same mindset as me. So when somebody comes out of nowhere and tells me I should do it this way, you're obviously not in the same mindset as me. So I'm not making it myself for you. They, right. If you don't want to buy it, don't buy it. 
And then on top of that, here's a here's a, a cool trick with taking advice. If they're not doing the same things that you're doing, like if they're if they're viewing and not streaming, don't take their advice. You know what I mean? Do mm. not because they're not they're not doing what you're doing, and so they they can't even comprehend what it takes to even do, do what you do. You know what I mean? Yes. So when you, when you take advice, take it from a streamer or take it from someone that's actually in that field because it's not very constructive if there's no type of evidence to back your statement or your your critique up. You know what I mean? You're mm-hmm. just giving me a critique with no type of, you know, with no type of background. You just right. it's like it's like I'm a rapper and you're you're a listener and you're telling me, oh, you should say your rap raps this way or you should say your raps this way. Yeah. I'm like, nah. What? Who? First of all, do you even rap? Like, <laughs> rap? <laughs> do you even write rhymes, my friend? <laughs> and that that answer is going to be, no, I don't. But I listen to it and I really like it. Yeah. Or it's like trying to teach uh, Michael Jordan how to play basketball better. It's like, are you qualified exactly. to give me those answers? I don't think you are. Right. Michael Jordan told me to tuck your elbow. I'm like, okay, bet you're right, Michael. <laughs> but if, if Jordan off, if Jordan Michael Jackson tells you how to play basketball, like I don't know, man, stick to your music, man. Yeah, exactly. Stay in your lane. Your elbow. Michael, I'm gonna get your hee hee and ass out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Moonwalk around right that. If Dave Chappelle told me some comedy, some comedy advice, I'll take it. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. But if AJ but if they... was like, "Yo, you should deliver your punchline this way." Or like Amy, if, if Amy Schumer, that, if, if Amy that, Schumer like, told me how to make yuck. better comedy, I I wouldn't listen. I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. we're like, yeah, yeah. Unseasoned humor, <laughs> no thanks. Miss me with that. <laughs> but yeah, man. Hey, I really enjoy talking to you guys, man. You guys are always awesome, and um, yeah. you guys are uh, you guys are incredible. Yeah, and... yeah. We we we. We thought we were gonna talk a last question, but we we yeah, didn't right? in, man. We I would... love this. Yeah. Last question, we stayed in for a whole another hour, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go ahead. Yeah, I'm, gonna go ahead. I'm gonna end it here, though. I think we got a lot of things covered. Uh, thank everybody for coming in. Thank you everybody for supporting and all the questions, Hamby. Oh. And thanks for the oh, follows man. and support. And we will be back probably what next maybe next week so we'll, we'll we'll figure it out we'll have some guests and we'll definitely be talking about some more cool stuff and i'll catch you guys in the next podcast i'm out right. peace right. what well, i'll do now